Welcome to City Life. I'm Beverly Thompson. If there's ever a fire or medical emergency, we know we can pick up the phone and Durham's Fire Department will arrive quickly to provide life-saving assistance. But let's admit it, most of us only think about the fire department when we need it. But you just might be surprised to know that today's firefighters do more than just fight fires. Joining me to talk about his vision for the fire department and what's new is newly named Fire Chief Dan Curia. Chief, welcome. Thank, thank you, you for having me. And thank you for joining me. Certainly. I appreciate it. Now, Chief, I know you've been in your position for a little more than eight months now. What would you say was the state of the fire department when you started? I would describe our fire department as, as very solid when I started. I've been in the Durham Fire Department for 23 years, so the department itself and the inner workings of the department weren't new to me. Mm -hmm. But we're very well regarded throughout the state of North Carolina. We are a well-managed department. We are esteemed with our colleagues. And when I took over, the fire department actually had achieved its accreditation status from the Center for Public Safety Excellence. Mm -hmm. And with that, the fire department gets measured against best practices for all fire departments. And the Durham Fire Department is one of only 200 fire departments worldwide to have achieved that. Wow. So we're actually in a pretty good place mm -hmm. when I took over. Mm -hmm. We just have to build on that. I hear you, that's great. Well, what would you say then are some of the challenges facing the fire department right now? The challenges are probably the same as every other city department and every other fire department. There's mm -hmm. the economic challenges that resulted from the economy downturn in 2008. Mm -hmm. So with those challenges, we have funding decisions to be made related to service delivery. In the last few years, rather than reduce the number of firefighters we have on the street, we've chosen to make operational cuts to our budget. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that impacts us by delaying training mm -hmm. or by searching different ways to provide training or even delaying equipment purchases, but it in no way impacts the service delivery that we provide. Uh huh. Okay, well, you've talked about some of the operational challenges. What about um, actually um, getting two people at a, in a certain amount of time? Is that a challenge for you right now? It is. Because Durham's growing. It is a challenge. Uh -huh. The city is more than 100 square miles. Uh -huh. So we constantly have to look to the future to figure out where fire stations need to be. So what we strive to do is get to any emergency in the city of Durham uh -huh. within seven minutes from the time the call comes in to 911. Mm -hmm. And then for emergencies that require more than one fire truck, we strive to have every truck there within 11 minutes. Wow, that's pretty ambitious, isn't it? It is, but it's an industry standard, it's a best practice, uh -huh. and Durham does a pretty good job uh, with proper planning, we can maintain that. Uh -huh. Do we have enough stations? We currently have enough stations. The, the city currently has 16 fire stations, we project out over 20 stations in the next couple of years. For right now, we lag in our response times just a bit, mm -hmm. but we're working with the city manager's office to address those deficiencies and mm -hmm. to develop a long-range plan to mm -hmm. meet our response times. So are there particular areas of the county that we are in desperate need of new fire stations? There, there are areas that we have identified for growth. Uh -huh. and. The next fire station in the city of Durham will be on the east side of the city, mm -hmm. sort of between Wellens Village and Briar Creek in Raleigh. It'll be fire station number 17, and it will be in the Leesville Road, Doc Nichols Road mm -hmm. area. Okay. That's slated to open in about two years, mm -hmm. and we'll have one engine company in that station. Mm -hmm. And then the next station will actually shift to the other side of the city, out past South Point Mall. Okay. And that'll be fire station number 18. It will be somewhere in the Scott King Road area. Okay, sounds like we're doing some good planning then. We are doing good planning. Good we have many more, on, many more on the books. Okay, all right. Well, we're going to take a quick break, so hold on, okay? Yeah. We're going to take, take a quick break, but stay with us to learn why, if you're having a heart attack, the first person you'd want to see is a Durham firefighter. We'll be right back.
welcome back to City Life. A critical component of how Durham responds to emergencies is our fire department. Joining me again to talk about this is Chief Dan Curia. Thanks, Chief, for staying with us. Certainly. Uh, Chief, we talked about the response side of the house, if you will. Now talk to me about how the fire department responds to emergencies. How many medical calls does the department respond to versus fire calls? Okay. The, the fire department responds to about 20,000 calls for emergency per year. Mm -hmm. And of those 20,000, about 60% or 12,000 are medical emergencies. Uh -huh. So we respond to about 8,000 fire emergencies in the course of a year. That is pretty significant. It's when pretty it's pretty busy, yes. Yeah. Well, I know that one p big push at your department is spearheading here in Durham is for everyone to learn CPR. Yes. Tell me why that is so important. Well, CPR, if someone in, is going into cardiac arrest, the worst thing that can be done is nothing. Mm -hmm. So we would like for everybody in the city of Durham and the county of Durham to know CPR so that life-saving measures can be initiated immediately. Mm -hmm. An important statistic for people to remember is that for every minute somebody goes without CPR, there's a 10% decrease in their chance mm. to survive. Wow. So with the Durham Fire Department, we are striving to have 45% of people who go into cardiac arrest mm -hmm. actually be revived and leave the hospital. Mm -hmm. We would like 100%, but our goal is 45%. In the state of North Carolina, only 5% of people who go into cardiac arrest actually survive. Mm -hmm. So in Durham last year, we were at the 35% mark. So mm -hmm. we're aiming a little bit higher right now. Mm -hmm. And I know you have a partnership with the Medic One Foundation. We do. The Durham Fire Department partnered with the Medic One Foundation, which is based out of Seattle, Washington. Mm -hmm. They are the organization that is the preeminent uh, CPR organization. Mm -hmm. They've piloted new techniques that the Durham Fire Department was able to model. Mm -hmm. So now we've partnered with them to fundraise and actually be able to provide more equipment to our firefighters uh -huh. so we can deliver service at a higher level once we get there. Uh -huh. Okay. And that partnership's going pretty well, I imagine, huh? It is going very well. Uh -huh. Again, with reduced budgets, sometimes we delay mm -hmm. or plan for purchases mm -hmm. with the Medic One Foundation and the fundraising that the fire department is now able to do, we can provide better equipment to our firefighters. Uh -huh. And I know that you've um, partnered with the Durham Public Schools and Durham County Government to pr provide CPR training. How is that going? And explain why <coughs> there is such a need for partnerships like this. Well, the training and the partnership is going really well. Mm -hmm. And the partnership was initiated due to a new requirement that 10th grade students learn CPR before they graduate high school. Uh -huh. So it seemed like a logical step for the city and the county to initially pull its resources to provide the training, partner with the public school system, and then also partner with Duke University mm -hmm. in order to provide the training. So to date, the, the fire department has trained all the 10th grade students from last school year, and we've again initiated the training. So. What we're able to do is we'll provide the training to 10th grade students, but we can also provide training to any other uh, person in the school system, mm -hmm. and then also into the community, uh -huh. into neighborhood uh, watch programs, neighborhood associations, city departments, county departments, any businesses who request it. Mm -hmm. I think I read somewhere that you've done it at football games as well. We have. Uh -huh. Again, the, the partnership with the public school system uh -huh. has us going to high school football games and setting up our tables with our CPR mannequins to provide the training to anybody who will come by. The worst thing that can be done is nothing when somebody's in cardiac arrest. With CPR training, we can teach you the basics uh -huh. in as little as one minute. Uh -huh. So wow. it's a tremendous payback for 60 seconds of your time. Yeah, who doesn't have a minute to exactly. spend? Exactly. All right. All right, well, let's switch gears just a little bit and talk about your fire ac academies. I, I know you've done some retooling of the fire acad academies recently. Uh, can you explain why you did that? Certainly. <clears throat> one thing that we strive to do is to reflect the community. Uh -huh. So there, uh, there's a, a real need for us to reflect the community, but also to get firefighters in and trained and on the streets very quickly. Mm -hmm. We recently were 
awarded what's called a SAFER grant from the federal government. Mm -hmm. And it's a staffing grant that enables us to keep more firefighters on the trucks. Mm -hmm. One component of that staffing grant is that the Durham Fire Department cannot incur more than three vacancies at any given time. Wow. So with our old model of training, we would wait until we had 10, 15, or 20 vacancies. Mm -hmm. Then we would hire a pool of untrained firefighters and put them through six months of training in order to accomplish uh, putting firefighters back on the street. Now we're partnering with Durham Technical Community College, the Chapel Hill Fire Department, and the Morrisville Fire Department mm -hmm. to do what we call a municipal fire academy, mm -hmm. where each municipality, instead of providing 20 raw recruits, each municipality provides three, four, or five recruits. Mm -hmm. We bring the recruits in, we are able to move from one fire academy per year to two fire academies per year. We're able to have a constant training cycle, which enables us to put our firefighters on the trucks much quicker. And it lowers the vacancy rate and allows more firefighters to arrive on scene. Mm -hmm. So Chief, who is a typical fire recruit? I mean, what does a, <laughs> a person that you're looking for, what qualities should they possess? I would say the number one quality that a firefighter should possess is the willingness and the desire to help others. Uh -huh. We all know that uh, government jobs are not high paying, but people who enter those careers typically do it out of the desire to help somebody mm -hmm. and to make a difference. Mm -hmm. So I would say the number one requirement is that you have to help and you have to want to make a, a difference. Mm -hmm. The specific things, we are obviously looking for somebody who's brave without being reckless. Mm -hmm. Someone who can be a team player but think independently when necessary. Mm -hmm. And someone who wants to stick with the Durham Fire Department and make a career out of it versus just having a job. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So those are the things that we look for. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be like 150 pounds, 5'10", and muscular? No, you, like no you don't. We take anybody um, who passes our testing. Uh -huh. We do an agility test uh -huh. to get in. So you have to be in some, some type of shape uh -huh. to get into the fire department. You have to take a written test. And after an interview process, we hire people. But then we, we put you through all the training and we'll mm -hmm. make sure that by the time you get on a fire truck, mm -hmm. you are in good enough physical shape to handle the job. And you'll know enough about firefighting and emergency medical service to provide good service. Well, Chief, we're gonna take another break right now. But when we come back, Chief Curia has something he wants to give each and every household. And it's free. We'll be right back. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to City Life. Joining me again is Chief Dan Kiria. Thanks, Chief, for staying with us. Sure, certainly. Okay. Chief, in the last uh, segment, we talked about the uh, Joint Fire Academies. I also know that you're partnering with the Durham Public Schools on a new program. And uh, if you would, tell our viewers a little bit ab about this program. Okay. The public school system approached the Durham Fire Department with the concept of a public safety academy to be held at Holton Career and Resource Center. Mm -hmm. So the long range goal is for the public school system to initiate this program at the beginning of the next school year. Uh -huh. And what they endeavor to do is to take junior and senior students and provide police and fire training for those students. Mm -hmm. So that by the time they graduate high school, from the fire side, they are certified as North Carolina firefighters. Uh -huh. At that point, 
the Durham Fire Department could partner with the school system to bring those students right into the Durham Fire Department. Wow. It would reduce the training time that we would need to make those firefighters Durham firefighters, but it would also enable us to reflect our community and use firefighters who are already residents of the city of Durham and again uh, who are a diverse pool of applicants mm -hmm. so we can reflect the community. Mm -hmm. So you don't need a, a college degree? You don't. We encourage a college degree for mm -hmm. our firefighters but it's not necessary. Uh -huh. For us the requirement is a high school graduation and 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Well, that is good information mm -hmm. to know, I'm sure, for a lot of people out there. Certainly. Good. Uh, and also, um, there's one other thing that you do that's very important, and is uh, home inspections. A lot of people may not know that all they have to do is give you a call, and you can come out and do that. We will. Typically, most people go through their whole lives and never use the fire department. Yeah. <laughs> or if they use the fire department, it's only one time, and it's typically not a positive experience. Yeah, yeah. People only call when something bad's going on. Right. But what we would like to encourage is for anybody watching to contact the fire department for a, a whole host of things. We will come to the house of any resident in the city of Durham mm -hmm. and we will give them a courtesy walkthrough, sort of a courtesy home inspection. Mm -hmm. There is nothing punitive about it, but we will walk through and we will point out typical fire hazards that we see. Maybe it's an overloaded extension cord. Maybe it's a, a back door that's blocked mm -hmm. that you don't ever think of, but right. if the house catches on fire, we want to make sure that you can get out. If you have young children, we could review any exit plans that you've already devised with your children to mm -hmm. make sure that they understand how serious fire is, how they need to get out of the house, and where to assemble outside so their parents can find them. Those are all services that we offer free of charge. Mm -hmm. And the other big thing that we offer is free smoke detectors uh -huh. for anybody in the city of Durham. Our goal is for every house to have a working smoke detector. We will come to your house, we will provide it for free, we will mount it on the wall or on the ceiling, whichever is appropriate, we'll test it. And if you already have a smoke detector, but the batteries are dead, we will come out and provide a free battery. Wow. <laughs> Again, and we will That's awesome. We will take the smoke detector off the wall, uh -huh. install it for you and put it back. Our goal is for anybody in the city of Durham to be as safe as possible. What kind of, and that's awesome customer service. That's all I can say. That is wonderful. That's what we strive to do. Mhm. Mm do you get a lot of, of calls from people? Already? Not not as many as we would like. Mhm. Mm so, again, if people go to our Facebook page and like us, they can then leave a comment. They can go to our website or they can call us. Mm -hmm. Any of those ways or they could just stop by their neighborhood firehouse, walk in and set the appointment. Chief, what a, a great service the fire department offers to our community. That is wonderful. Um, are there any closing thoughts you'd like to leave for our viewers? I would uh, like for everybody who's watching to know that the men and the women of the Durham Fire Department are the most dedicated professional workforce that uh, they could actually have in, in the city. We work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We're always here, we're always willing to help, and it doesn't have to be an emergency. All right, sounds good. And I might add that uh, we do a resident satisfaction survey every two years. Your fire department ranks highest, I tell you, of almost every <coughs> department. I mean, people love firefighters, and we thank you for all that you do. Well, thank you for saying so, and uh, Durham's firefighters love the community, too. All righty. All right, thanks for joining me. Certainly. Well, that does it for City Life. Uh, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. You can also find us on demand on YouTube. I'm Beverly Thompson. Thank you so much for joining me to learn more about City Life in Durham.